Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Brokerpreneur Podcast. I am Dr. Ben Spears, the ambassador of Flow, and I'm here with, you know, the real winner, <laughs> the big, <laughs> the big guy. Ben, you're the real winner. Everybody knows that man. <laughs> <laughs> only because I get to, only because I get to work with you every day, Dave. All right, I, I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. That's a, you're not yeah. throwing a nice thing every now and then. Yeah, I appreciate um, that. It's Valentine's. It's not Valentine's Day. Wh- yeah. Where are you at, dude? I mean, it's October. September or something like that. I don't know when this is coming out. I don't know when this is coming out. Take two. I don't know when it's coming out. It's, it's September and beyond. Right. <laughs> and so um, that's kind of what we're talking about today. It is. We're talking about, Absolutely. you know, you know, winners. Are, are we talking about losers? We're just going to talk about winning. We're going to talk about winning, baby. Okay. Well, let's just talk you know about it. winning. Tell, tell us a little bit what we're, what we're talking about. Yeah. So we're going to, so we're going to dig into the, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of excitement about hiring that big team and, and getting those experienced agents and doing all those things that just kind of bring in that one big win that really feeds the manager's ego and yep. makes that big market share shift. We're going to talk about hiring winners and, and, just dig into the good and bad of it a little bit, and then we got a cool action item. Hopefully, that'll that'll help everybody out if they stay tuned. So I love it. Well, guys, um, you know, wherever you're listening to this, make sure you hit that follow, that subscribe button. <laughs> There's absolutely no better time than the present than to go to prospectboomerang.com, uh, click that green sign up button at the top, um, and join one of our free recruiting masterminds. As soon as you sign up, I'll just send you an I'll send you an invite. You know, to make sure that that you find it. You know, the the right way, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and join the right groups. We want to make sure that we get to know you and your business. Uh, a little bit more and let you guys get to know us and ours as well. Yep. So Matt. Yeah, man. Every, every, every broker, every manager, every owner, whatever, um, they, they want to be known as like, yeah, you know, that, you know, that hundred million dollar team, that $50 million team. Yep. Like I, I, I went out there yep. and reeled, reeled those people in. Right? right. That was, that was all me. Right. Why, why, why is that? Yeah. So, uh, so a little bit of that is ego. Okay. okay. I don't, depending on who it is, you know, we'll talk about how much it's ego and how much it is an ego, but, but, uh, a little bit of that is ego for sure. Yep. But the, uh, but the other part of it is, you know, when you, when you hire experienced people, you know, there's, uh, you know, maybe not as much training that has to go in, right. Mm-hmm. Maybe not yeah. as much, they're a little bit more self-sufficient, right. Yep. The, another big thing is, is there's an immediate market share shift, right? Depending on what oh, market yeah. you're in, $50 million producer, wherever you are is, is a big deal, right? Yep. But, uh, but a $50 million producer, when you get that $50 million in production, somebody else lost it. Yes. Right? So there's a big market share shift on, on, on all yeah. of that as, like as well. Two-point swing. That's right. That's right. Two for one cotton. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So the, uh, uh, so all of that makes a, you know, all of that makes a difference. And then there's, you know, listings immediately, there's sales immediately. There's just, you know, there's that winner's atmosphere, yeah. right? So all of that really adds up to people being excited about being able to being able to do that. But how many of those are you, and this is what we're going to kind of talk about mm-hmm. today. How many of those are you going to hire, right? What is your definition yeah. of a, of a winner, right? Yep. And, and I think probably the first place to start is, you know, whenever I say, what's your definition of a winner as a manager, what would make you a winner, right? Is that, is that during the course of a 12 month period, you hire a $50 million team, plus you hire seven other teams that are 10 million plus, right? Is that, is that what makes you a million, a a winner, a millionaire, a a, a chief boss, head, great person or whatever it is in everybody's eyes that matters and counts. Level 15, you know, a tiefling barbarian. That's exactly right. (laughs) Whatever it is, right? Is that what makes you that winner? Yeah. Or is it the uh, is it the the people that are constantly coming on and those people evolving and you know did you uh, you know do you pride yourself in being a winner because you know two million dollar producers come to you and within yep. twelve months they're four or five million dollar producers right yeah. so so part of what you have to explore to begin with is what makes you as a manager feel like a winner right because yep. it's different skill sets absolutely. Uh, so, so look at it, uh, probably look at it, look at it like this, right? You know, getting a, getting what's a, a luxury listing in your market, it takes a different skill set. It takes different promises on the, on the, uh, you know, on the listing appointment, it takes a different marketing plan. It takes all of that. Okay. And whenever I say a luxury listing, you might be in a market where a luxury listing is, is the $500,000. Yeah. Uh, or you might or be in a non-existent. market or non-existent. <laughs> That's right. Or you might be in one that it's $35 million or $55 yeah. million, right? But the but the bottom line is, whatever that luxury listing is, it takes that extra, Yep. right? 
There's not as many of them. They don't sell as quickly. Uh, you got to do, you got to service it better. Yeah. Uh, all of that. It puts you into a ne- different network. It puts you into a different group. There's a lot of big pluses. Well, the same thing is true when you're recruiting, right? There's just not as many, you know, depending on, on your market, there's not as many $50 million teams, right? Yep. There's not as many, maybe the market you're in, maybe there's not as 10 million, or maybe there's not as many $500 million teams, whatever the deal is. Yeah. So you have to figure out what that, what that, that top tier is and whether or not that's what's going to make you feel like a winner. Okay. Yeah. And are you trying to do that because you want to be seen that way in the eyes of other people or this is what I kind of want to dig into. Okay. Is it really about profitability? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. And because so, as, 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 as an entrepreneur, right. I'm, I'm all about that company dollar. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why we're brokerpreneurs. Exactly. Right. So if you're at commission split caps, so what is the benefit? Why do you want that $50 million team? If you have a flat fee on your commission plan, why do you want the $50 million team? Not saying don't get them, not yeah. saying it's not right to not want them. Okay. Why do you want them? Because here's what, here's what ends up happening. If you don't have a real reason and if you're not developing yourself to be better at that, but you keep telling yourself that's what you want, you're actually setting yourself up to fail. The truth is, if you're, if you're digging in and saying, listen, I want that $50 million team. I want to be known as the guy that hired that $50 million team. And you're not practicing your conversations about how to help someone transition the team. Guess what? It isn't going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you know how everybody's like, oh, you know, I just, I want to, I want to make, you know, millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Like you talk to everybody, they're like, yeah, I want to make millions of dollars. Right. There are a few people out there, like, and I know a few, they're like, I don't want millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And then there's a few of those people who would say, gosh, yeah, I just, I just want tens of millions of dollars. They don't really know why, but it's right. almost like, well, all my friends want tens of right. millions of dollars. Right. Right. So why wouldn't I want tens right. of millions of dollars? And so I think, I think you're kind of like, um, you know, ingrained in that broker, um, that broker manager, you know, kind of recruiting position to yep. just think like, well, if, if, if they're the biggest and the best, then they, they have to be what's best to get, mm-hmm. to get for the office. Right. Uh, we've definitely talked to people who are like, like, I don't, I don't want those. Right. Right. Like here, you know, I, I want the three to 5 million. You know, that's what they're looking for. Like, you know, getting in that sweet spot right. and, uh, and, and kudos, kudos yep. to those, to those companies. Yep. But it's, uh, yeah, I, I think it's one of those things where you just think, you know, as a, as a, as a broker manager, recruiting manager, whatever, the bigger, the bigger, the better. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the truth is it's not the bigger, the better. Yeah. So the, so the bottom line is, uh, once someone has developed, has evolved and developed as a team, okay. Yeah. Once they've started to create uh, a certain amount of synergy and they've got people in place and they have systems in place and they're, and they're constantly spinning off a certain amount of business and, and they know the buckets that they're getting the business from and all that kind of stuff. They are a brokerage within your brokerage. Right. Are you set up for that? Yeah. Are you, so, so remember the, the closing doesn't happen. You don't just have a great conversation with somebody and go, you know what, Ben, let's close on this guy. Let's, let's go yeah. ahead and throw this out there and hit with him and, and he's going to fall for this and we're going to sucker this guy and he's going to come <laughs> on. Right? right. That isn't the way it goes. We've yeah. talked about this. The, the closing begins before you actually meet the person. Yeah. Right. Because it's about your culture. It's about your atmosphere. It's about how good of a mix it. Right. Absolutely. So, so all of those things have to happen in order to get to that. All those things have to happen in order to get to that point. Mm-hmm. So sometimes what people forget about is that there's a, that these, these people, these large teams, uh, or just a single producer with a little bit of staff is going to be a, a broker, a brokerage inside your brokerage. Yeah. And if you're not set up the right way to deal with that, if you don't have the staff in place, if you don't have the systems in place, even if you do hit them with that close and it just happens to work. Yeah. Now you got to fulfill. Yeah. You got a fulfillment issue at that point. Right. Yeah. If you're not ready to do that, that just turns out to be a problem. So you have to be planning how to, to bring that person on board. You have to be planning what resources are available. You have to be having that conversation the entire time so that you're pointing them in a certain direction so that the one that you do get is a fit. Yeah. Not just that they came on board, but that they're a fit. Because you're not going to take a $50 million team and go, hey, come on over here, guys. All right, go sit over there. Go do your thing. I'm going to go catch up with another $50 million team. Yeah. That is not what's happening. Yeah. At one, that's going to rock your world. That's right. At some point, no matter how big your brokerage is, at some point, 
they're going to require some attention. They're going to require you paying attention to them. They're going to require you digging in and doing the things that you need to do in order to make them feel comfortable being acclimated to your system. Remember that honeymoon that we talked about? Absolutely. And, and systems that, that, that all has to happen. And if that's not happening the way that it needs to, then what we end up with is even if you do get that higher, you end up with an issue because that brokerage within a brokerage is splintering what it, who it is and what, what you are. So yep. now the next team that you hire is get, has a completely different plan. That would be, so, so, so fashion it like this, maybe think about it like this. How effective would it be if you owned a brokerage and you brought a Cobble Banker brokerage into your brokerage, uh -huh. you brought a Keller Williams brokerage into your brokerage, yeah. you brought a Remax brokerage into your brokerage, you brought a whoever, and some of the people are really similar, but they all have different systems of how to do things. Right. You have to have what you're doing from a systemization down pat so well so that you know that that team, that winning team actually fits with you because you've said, this is what it means for me to be a winner. And that means the people acclimating to our systems, that means them leveraging it and to a certain extent becoming part of the whole. Yeah. They're not going to be a hundred percent part of it, but for some, uh, for some percentage of it, they're going to be part of that whole now. And now the next team that you bring on, there's going to be another piece of what they do that is part of the whole. And the other one that you bring on and the other agent, and all of a sudden now you have all these pieces that are a collage of what it is from a cultural standpoint, instead of you just going, okay, I got something completely isolated here. I've got something completely isolated here. I've got something completely isolated here and none of them working together. That is the recipe for a walkout that completely annihilates you. Yeah. And then, you know, when you were talking about, um, you know, even if, even if you're like, Hey, let's close on this guy. And for some chance it randomly works. Mm -hmm. I can't think of this story or this movie or what it's called. So I apologize, but it's, you know, that's very similar to, um, there's, there's like, there's like a movie where this like, you know, scrawny guy goes out, destroys this dragon or this monster, or this giant or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but he doesn't, everybody thinks he does, but actually, you know, the guy like, you know, got hit in the head with a poison arrow and he fell over and then everybody looks and he's standing there, <laughs> the giants, you know, done and the scrawny guys beside him. And he's like, what? It was me. <laughs> you know what what I mean? that Shrek? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. But, but you know, then everybody looks at you and like, Oh, how did, how did you do it? Teach, ev teach everybody how, how else, how, oh, yeah. how, how, how you did it. And, uh, and you let that ego and that bravado, oh, yeah. you know, kind of, kind of take over. And it was like, oh, oh, it was, it was easy. You know, I, I, I did this and I just, you know, I, I use this perfect clothes. Right. And, yep. and here everybody, and everybody starts using it. It's like, it's not working. It's right. not working for me. Right. Um, poison dart isn't poison. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think that was one BC is what that was. Was it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 I think, I think you're right. Like with uh, Ringo Starr or something yeah, like that. Yeah. 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 Right. And so, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want people to, to, to fall. It's just another, it's just another reason, um, to not fall in that trap yep. of, of feeling like, well, gosh, like this, this, this enormous team, I have to go and I have to, I have to do that. Cause it's gonna, it's gonna make me, me look great. Um, yep. it, it may not, um, you know, do anything as far as, you know, production or comp company dollar. Definitely. It's going to, you know, boost my, my office up in the rankings, right. yep. you know, locally, which is, which can be a, a good thing and, and, and attract other agents. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's definitely, uh, one of those things where, um, you know, lo local celebrity can, can drive, absolutely can drive more agents to your, um, to your brokerage, but you just have to, you just have to be really careful about how you define that win. Yeah, going 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 down that path, how you define the win, um, and then taking a step back and saying, you know, I'm crossing my arms, everybody. Like, right. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a winner. Right. Right. Because 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 I did this, and and that's very that's very similar to like a uh, uh, an agent who would go and close a two million dollar home, mm -hmm. and then yep. just cross their arms and be like. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did that. I, right. I I closed that, and then like, well, when's your next closing? Right. That's like, and 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 so let's stick with that example because yeah. again, that's a great example. Just like we were talking about the luxury listing and everything before. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, this podcast is powered by Prospect Boomerang. We all know broker owners struggle with profitability. Prospect Boomerang compounds your profits by recruiting the best agents to your brokerage. For consistent growth, visit prospectboomerang.com. So. 
we all know that the smart thing to do is if you get that $2 million listing, you get it under contract and you get it closed. We all know that the network of people that were surrounding that, that were attracted to that, whether it was the other agents bringing their buyers, whether it was those buyers coming into open house, whether you send it out to a whale list and the whale list, you know, you got some hits on it and, and you're running some ads and you're doing yeah. all these things. You're, you're just attracting all of this attention. As soon as the sale's over, if you go, oh, well, you know, I'm done, right? Oh, Finish. yeah. Yeah. At that point, you've actually lost the momentum that was created, right? Yes. So I think we would all agree that a winner isn't someone who quits when they score the first touchdown. Yes. Right? A winner is the one that's going to keep going and it's going to take, and they're going to take their plan and learn how to leverage their plan with themselves and with the rest of their team and, and all of that. So now, what worked on that $2 million listing, right? Did the postcards work? Uh, did the did the brochures that you have done work? What did the what actually made things go the way that it was supposed to go? Did you target again? Did you use a whale list and target people on Facebook that was a, that was a certain group? I mean, yeah. what is it that worked? Memorialize that, right, and turn it into something that's evergreen. Turn yeah. it into something that's always going to work and focus on it and make sure that it goes over and over and over into your business plan so that you're going to be able to succeed with it. We know that's what we do in sales when it comes to, to selling houses. You don't just close it and go, okay, whatever, and move on to the next one. Yeah. Why would we do that in recruiting just chasing that one big win? Yeah. The point is having high, that one big hire is not what is going to make you successful. Yeah. The truth is the system that allows you to make that one big hire is what's going to allow your brokerage to be successful. Yeah. Easy be come, easy go. That's right. Because they, they, they come, they leave and they, and they, you know, you get a $50 million team that comes in and they chase off $75 million worth of production because they weren't a good fit. Yep. That's right. Exactly I mean, right. that's a, that's a net loss. 25 million if my math is right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so we want to make sure that, that whenever you're looking at this from a big picture standpoint, that that you know what you define as a winner yourself. What is yep. going to make you feel good about the system that you're using, number one. Number two, who is it that's a winner? And this is what we'll talk about in the action, uh, in the action item in just, okay. a, in just a second. Okay. Who is it that's, uh, you know, how do you define a winner, right? And then, and then the third thing that I think that's really important to this is, you know, know from a profitability standpoint what you think a winner looks like. Okay. Okay. If everyone's commission split is the same, if you get paid per transaction, hell yes, you want somebody doing 300 transactions a year. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. just common sense, right? Yeah. If you got a cap, it's a different, it's a different scenario. It's a different situation, right? You, is everybody on the team going to cap? How does that, how does that work? Is it flat fee per what? Right. So typically, and, and I would think every commission plan, the more units and volume someone does, the, the more money that the brokerage makes from a company dollar standpoint. Okay. Yes. Ideally. Ideally, right. I know that's not, you can't say that that's the, the way with everything, but let's, let's say that it is that way, with that, that way with everything. There's a scale factor that goes into that. Are you better off having 10 million, are you better off having 10 $5 million producers or one $50 million producer? Right. If you're worried about headache and convenience, maybe it's the $50 million producer. And uh -huh. if that works for you, wonderful. Maybe it's the other 10 because you don't want all your eggs in one basket and because you want them to be spread out across the town that you're at or because you have three offices and you need them spread out in different offices instead of having one person parked all their production in one place, right? Yep. The point is identify that. Make sure that you know what a winner looks like from, from their standpoint. And again, that starts though from taking a look at you. Yeah. Why, why do you want to win with that? Yeah, and not only you know, looking, using that same example of you know, do you want that $50 million or do you want $10, $5 million? Um, it's it's it. It can be difficult for that fifty million to turn into a seventy-five million or a yeah. hundred million, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's pretty easy to get complacent and be like, "I'm pretty consistently right. a fifty million dollar producer. I'm right. I'm doing all right." But you get those ten, you get those ten fives. There's 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 a chance that one of those fives mm -hmm. bumps up, bumps Absolutely. up to a ten, and or or two of them go to a twenty. Absolutely. Then all of a sudden you have those those ten those those same ten that started at fifty. And now collectively they're doing a hundred million dollars together. Right. Or, and, you know, yeah. And, and people doing 50, 75, a hundred million people that are at the top of their game, uh, broker and, uh, that are at the top of the brokerage game and whatever the market is, they get bored. Yeah. Right. They want to yeah. go do something else now. Right. Yeah. They, they're going to start flipping. They're going to start whatever else it is. Yeah. Right. 
And the next thing you know, your $50 million producer has now, you know, they're really great with their money and they're making, like you said, 50, 45, 60, something like that. But they're spending their time now, instead of growing that business, they're growing another segment of their business. Good for them. I love the diversification, right? Entrepreneurs. Right. Absolutely. However, does that mean that's the best thing for you owning your brokerage? Yeah. Right. So, so, uh, if you're, if you're out there listening to this and you think that this is an extreme example, it's not, yep. you need to listen to, to all of this, right? 10, 10, $5 million producers or five, $10 million producers. I don't know how yeah. we just got, okay. Either way. Yeah. So if we, if you have core services, your $50 million team, uh, the core services, your mortgage, your title, your, whatever, all those other things are mm-hmm. one bad situation. You just lost the opportunity on $50 million worth of production. Yeah. And everything associated with that. With those 10, 5 million or 5, 10 million, however it is that we said that, you can screw up a bunch. <laughs> right. Right? I yeah. mean, and that's just the truth. That's that's yeah. just that's just what happens, right? Yeah. And so so all of these things have to come into play when it when it boils down to again, how do you what is it that you feel like you're gonna be a winner with? Right. Yep. Is it the production that's coming on, or is it the production that's coming on and they're using all your core services? You could care less because you're capping out at whatever point it is. So all of these things make a difference. And that's again, let's let's dig into the action item. Okay. And uh and uh, and that'll hopefully help us that'll hopefully help us out, point us in the right direction. Perfect. Well guys, before you do that, uh, before we get to that action item, make sure you're wherever you're listening to this. Uh, whether it be iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, these or any of those platforms that you hit that follow button. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, uh, make sure you hit that red subscribe button, that bell right beside of it. You get notified every time we drop a new episode. Uh, if you want to watch or listen to these all in the same place, go to prospectboomerang.com. Click on podcast at the top, and, and they're all on that page, um, along with you know the opportunity to join our VIP list and get some of our downloads that we talk about on the yep. podcast as well um, in, in that recruiting mastermind. So, um, Matt. What's this? You got me on. I'm on the edge of my stool. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What's the action item? So, uh, so, so let me say this first. So we've talked a lot about production, right? Okay. So that does not mean that there doesn't need to be a cultural fit. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've touched on that and we've said that, right. But, but let's make sure that I'm, everyone knows that we're not diminishing that part that, that has to be in place. Okay. But, but in this particular podcast, we've talked a lot about the production side of that and, uh, and all of those things. And the action item is going to, is going to fall along with that, but I don't want somebody that's hearing this for the first time. If this just happens to be the, the roulette example that they grabbed onto (laughs) as they're going through episodes, I don't want them to think that, oh, man, these guys are just talking about just production and, and, and that's all it is, right? All of our podcasts are really balanced, big picture, but the bottom line is, is culture has to be part of it. Production has to be part of it, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, sales is not a, uh, it's not a numbers game. It's a relationship game, but the yeah. number one rule is numbers, right? Yeah. Say that all well, the time. If they're listening at 22 minutes, they're into this anyway. Right. I love it. Good. <laughs> so, uh, so, the, uh, uh, so here's, the, here's the action item. Figure okay. out what your sweet spot is. Right. And that means, you know, from a a go back and look at your roster and see which agent is the most agent or agents is the most profitable for you. Okay, that's not just company dollar. If you have ancillary services, who's handing over the money, all that kind of stuff, have a running have a running total of of who that person is. It's a simple Excel spreadsheet. If you don't have one, put the person's name put their, their volume on it. And then however the commission company dollar is or whatever, and then how much they're using the other services. Yeah. Okay. What's going to happen is as you, as you plug all this in, yes, it's going to be a pain in the ass to do to begin with. I get that. Okay. Suck it up and get it done. Right. The, the, you get all that information in there. You're going to notice a, you're going to notice a pattern, right? You're going to, as you go through, you're going to go, Oh, that's right. So-and-so does do a lot of this. And, and that person does do a lot of that. And that person, you know, they're really great production, but I kind of cap out and that's the maximum amount that I'm, that I make. What you're going to do is, is a pattern is going to, to arise. Okay. And the pattern that is going to arise is going to say, this is the type of agent that we actually need in the office. And it's going to help you target that kind of person. Now from a, uh, from a, from a team building standpoint, if you have six agents that are kind of similar, that they're all contributing at that level, don't you think those are the best ones to reach out to to say, hey, who are you bumping into in the market that's just like you? Yeah. So if you do this drill and you go through and you look at it and you take a, a take a close look at who's productive all the way around, right? Who's, who's your best player from a soccer standpoint, right? Who's the utility player? 
You yeah. got some people that are just great on defense. Some people are natural striker. You got your goalies and everything. You got your midfielders. But there's some people that you can kind of plug them in anywhere. Yeah. That's the kind of person from a production standpoint that you want is who is all around good at generating revenue and who's all around good at generating the things that make your, uh, that make you feel like a winner. See who that person is. Those are the ones that you should be targeting, asking them to help you find other people in the market just like them. They're going to take it as a compliment and they're going to go out and find people that are like them and it's going to make you more successful and you're going to feel like more of a winner because the people that are doing a great job in your office are going out and helping you hire other people just like them. Yeah. Um, well, Matt, yep. I'm looking for somebody just like you. No, I'm right here. Just, I mean, because I'm just trying, you know, I'm like, I think podcasts could just be better. Right. With, right if we had two can mats. Can you imagine how much arguing there would be on, we had on that two podcast? mats? <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> so, Or if we had two bends. Then, yeah, nothing. You know would how much flow done. we would have? Yeah, there'd be so much flow and there'd be so many jokes that nobody gets. <laughs> Except me, but I get everybody a kick out of it. Everybody gets your jokes, Ben. Yeah, but they everybody you know, everybody gets my jokes, but I'm the one that thinks but, they're funny. But see, here's the cool part. <laughs> they're they're working out in the gym in the morning and they're running on the treadmill and all of a sudden they just start laughing out loud because you just made a joke about yeah, <laughs> one like, BC. He said some, yeah, he said something about a dinosaur or a giant. Is this a recruiting podcast? Uh, <laughs> Why is there a poison dart in somebody's neck? <laughs> so Matt. Yep. There's no replacing either one of us. There's not. Right. There's there's no there's no Matt and Ben somewhere else. Not as cool as us. Yeah. Thank thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we but we still bring that fire. Yep. Every single episode. Yep. Um, you know, we we, we want to make sure that everybody's going after the right people for their brokerage. Absolutely. And and that they're not just being caught up into uh, the shiny sh- oh, Absolutely. Sorry, shiny object. Shiny agent. <laughs> syndrome <laughs> yeah shiny agent syndrome um and we do that for one reason and one reason alone let's tell them why that is because we just want to be part of their win 